and uh, let's say I want to do some Python, like I want to build a Python app, or maybe someone else did the Python app and I want to run it on my machine, but I don't have Python. So you say I could take one of those dev container. So I'm assuming I need Docker install or like uh, Podman, something on my machine to like run that container, but I will just create that environment and then like go inside to code. In this episode of Open Up Microsoft, I have Carlos with me, and we'll be talking about a fantastic tool for developer that include a database. You definitely don't want to miss that. I'm very happy to have you on the show, Carlos. So today we'll be talking about the version uh, you started uh, of a dev container. But before we start digging about like that specific version with like an SQL database, very excited about that, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But maybe let's clarify what's a dev container. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for having me here in the show, Frank. Very excited. So let's jump into my screen. I would like to start by here. So if you want to learn all things about dev containers, you can simply go to containers.dev. We'll include those links in, in the description of this video. But from this website, you can understand everything. But let's start with the basics. What is a dev container? It's a containerized environment that includes the libraries, includes the tools, includes the code base, and even can include the database. So everything you need for your application to be functional in a containerized environment running everywhere, you can have it with dev containers. And everything works by uh, metadata, a file that is called the devcontainer.json. It's a, a definition where you will enrich the file with all the things you need. Uh, here's an example how the dev container uh, can be used in the inner loop and the and also the outer loop because, as I mentioned, you can have everything that you need for your application to be functional. So you can have a dev container for your local environment with just the basic for your local development. And you can have, for example, another dev container for your integration testing with a very specific set of tools or things inside of the dev container that can be helpful. So yeah, it's it's very powerful. And that's why we introduce a new template. So let me show you the templates. Before I jump into the templates for Azure SQL, uh, let's go to available templates here in this project. And you will find that the project is open source, by the way. It has a very large collection of templates. So we're looking at this, we were thinking like, okay, it would be a good opportunity to introduce a new template into this collection that was built by the SQL Developer Experiences team that is specifically for developers that wants to use Azure SQL database. So just long be, story just short, that's you, you, uh, <laughs> you jump on, on your version. Let me recap just to make sure I understand and maybe clarify like use case where it could be useful oh, yeah. for like developers. So let's say, I'm on, it works on any platform, right? So I'm on Windows, right. I'm on Linux, it works. And uh, let's say I want to do some Python, like I want to mm -hmm. build a Python app, or maybe someone else did the Python app and I want to run it on my machine, but I don't have Python. So you say I could take one of those dev container. So I'm assuming I need Docker install or like uh, Podman, something on my machine to like run that container, but mm -hmm. I will just create that environment and then like, go inside to code and like all what I need will be there. Is it? Yeah, that? yeah, that's right. Actually, I have an example of that in the demo. Oh, so you will see it in action. Like we were prepared, <laughs> excellent, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, before we jump into the, the, the demo, I would like to go to this repo. This is the, the Azure SQL DV repo. So these are the templates we created. And this is something we would like from the community. We would like to get some feedback. If you want to contribute to this project, it's easy as just going to, to the repo and reading the instructions, or you can reach out and we can help you. So this is the idea. This is what we built specifically for Azure SQL Database. As you can see, it will be a local environment running everywhere, as you said, Frank, and it will use VS Code. Oh, excuse me. It would use VS Code. It would use GitHub because all the all the template and everything is stored in version control, and it will mm -hmm. use Docker. So it will come with a database, but also it will come with the preferred language you want to use for your application. So it can it can be Node, it can be .NET, it can be Python. And we're working on new templates for Go and Rust. So you have plenty of options, and you will have a way to communicate your 
use your database and interact between the, the data and the application. And even more, we introduced some tools because remember, you can install whatever you want on those dev containers. So we introduced some tools or CLIs that will help developers to transition from that local environment to the cloud. In this case, it's the Azure. As you can see, GitHub Actions will use to will be can be helpful to land your application in static Azure static web apps or Azure SQL database. So that's the idea to make local development easier, but even easier the transition. There is plenty of documentation about this project. You can find it here. We explain all the details, everything that it's included. So as you can see, it's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And even a template here, how it can get started. So if we want to try this out, feel free to use the links or reach out if you want more information. So let's see this in action, right? Yeah. So let's see that's <laughs> the demo. That's of the episode. That's what that's where we are here, right? Exactly. So let's, let's imagine in action. Let's imagine uh, as you said, right? I'm a Python developer. So I have everything ready in my local machine for Python. I can use Python every day. But you share this this library app with me, and it happens to be Node. So it's using Node. I don't have that Node on my machine, so I have to go through the painful process to install Node, <laughs> to install Very NPM. Small, no developer, yeah, exactly. So it's it's not convenient, right? So you will be spending time that you don't need to spend. And for example, I have the back end here, the front end, right? So if I do, if I navigate to the back end of my application. And then I do node, uh, let's see, index.js. What happens is that I don't have node, right? So it doesn't work. Out of, the, out of the box, it doesn't work. So I'm in trouble. So here's where dev containers can be very helpful. And even though, in this case, you need a database because you are creating an API. So you need something to, to where you will be storing your, your, your data. So yeah. let's let's use dev containers. Um, the first thing you have to do is like you have to have the dev containers extension installed for sure. So if we search here for dev containers, I already have the extension. I already have Docker my machine. I already have VS Code, so I'm ready to go. Um, there is two ways you can um, add a dev container configuration file here. One is by using this button that I really like, and then simply as add dev container configuration file. You will see what happens when I click this. It asks me if I want to do it on my workspace or if I have um, um, a project that is already on, on, on source control. So we are going to select source control because that's the beauty of this. If I add the dev container here, it will be part of my project. So whoever picks this repo will be able to use it without doing anything. Um, so here, this list, once again, is large. It, these are the templates that I show you on the website. So let's go here and do Azure SQL because we're interested on Azure SQL. And I'm going to pick the one for Node. Okay, I'm going cool to go. Yeah. yeah yep. So we have. Oh, that was too fast. By the way, uh, as you can see, when I do Azure SQL, uh, let's do it again. Azure SQL. You see that these are the templates that we have available right now. And it says Microsoft. There are templates that are created by the community. There are templates that are created by other teams at Microsoft. This was created by us. So I'm going to choose Node. I'm going to go with the default here. And this option is just to add more things. Remember what I mentioned, it comes with libraries, tools, CLIs, whatever you want. So I have options to even modify this template that already includes some CLIs. So I'm going to skip it because I want to go simple and notice what happened. Wow, that was very fast. So what happened was like, VS Code is identifying this and saying, yeah, I see that you have a dev container convention file. Let's reopen this project in a container. So it's okay. not longer going to be running on my machine. So we will solve that problem. Like it works on my machine, right? So it was working on your machine, Frank, but it wasn't on mine because I didn't have Node. So this is how we solve it. Okay. And um, it's just a matter to click here and I'll be all set. But let's just at sure. least check this configuration file. Let's let's explore first. Let's let's go to a file explorer for a second. And you see that I have a back end and front end, right? Those are the okay. two folders I had before. But I have all these new folders that are flagged in version control already. And these files are part of the template that uh, we downloaded if you will. So from here, this is the metadata file I mentioned. 
I'm mm-hmm. not going to go into this in very detail because it's um, it's fairly large, but I can tell that in here we are setting a specific configurations, for example, for um, extensions. Here's the MSQL extension. So whenever you use this, it comes with the ex- connection string already set, so you can connect to a database. Uh, you can see that that's not the only extension. Depending on the language, we'll include the, the, the extensions that will be helpful for your project. So in this case, it's Node, so I have one for Lint, for Code, NPM, blah, blah, blah. Lots of stuff. Um, as I said, we create a database for you. So we include a post create command that's going to run just once after the container is started. Mm-hmm. And some features and more stuff. So as you can see, it's very complete. So next step here is for me to rebuild this or reopen in a container. I already did that because it takes like two minutes, depending on your machine or where you are running, to build the containerized environment for you. I'm done with that. So let's jump in here. And as you can see, this is what happened. So after I like click the reopen button, it goes through the process of reading that metadata file and then creating a database, installing the tools and everything for you. So I don't have to do anything and I can just start my project right away. So that's what we were looking for, right, Frank? Like, yes, exactly. Start really quick. Great. So now we are, as we can see in the bottom left, it says that we are in like a, a container right now. So yes. and all the, the all the description, everything that was specified in that file is now part of the container. And we see yes. the code word there. And now we yeah. have the tool we need to continue and a database. Yeah, that's right. The database. So that's very important. Thank you for that. So if I click on here, this is the extension that comes as part of the, the, the template, right? Uh, so Right here, I have this database called library. It's a sample database. It has mm-hmm. data and everything. So that means that I can run my project. So I already did that. I have my back end running. I have my front end here. So let's run the front end really quick just to show you that this dev container contains a working environment. So from here, I can add myself or let's add Frank. As <laughs> let's do Frank really quick here with these very distinguished authors. So it's working. So if we jump back to our containerized environment and we query the database really quick, um, let's see. Oh, no, this is not my containerized, sorry. This is my containerized environment. And let's run a query for the tools, the authors table really quick. You will see that Frank was added. So it's a local environment that can run everywhere. It, it includes everything. And once you are ready to do the next step, you have the tools that will help you to do the transition to Azure. So that's kind of the idea here. And I love that because having a database in a container, I think for a developer, it's it's so amazing because when you're done with it, it just vanish and you free up some resources. Exactly. Having the database running all the time on your machine, then it eats resources. So now you not only you can have all the toolings like the SDK and everything you need for like coding in a specific language, but package with the database. That's great. Yeah. So all, yeah, of, that, all of that, it's open source. It's available, yeah. right? You saw That's the, correct. You saw us the yeah. repo before. Yeah, here's the repo, and we'll include, of course, the links. And this is part of, a, let's say, a larger project, is the Dev Containers project. So everything is open source. So feel free to contribute and open issues, or ask questions. We want the community to be part of this, for sure. Right now. And so right now you have .NET, Python, I forgot, uh, TypeScript. Uh, and no, uh, yeah, so node.net, .net Aspire, for sure. And oh, yeah. we have Python. So we are working on Go, Rust, or whatever the community thinks it's useful for them. Yeah, we're oh, open to great. suggestions. Yeah. Well, thank you a lot. I hope people join, uh, go have a try to that repo. I definitely did, and I loved it. So it's an invite, cool. people. <laughs> you should definitely <laughs> go there and try it. It's amazing. Thank you a lot, Carlos, for uh, this show today. It was great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank.